So what I'm going to do is just run through um, the ta what, what, what taxes are involved and the sort of things you might be thinking about. Uh, and I think it's fair to say there isn't actually one size fits all. Uh, it was mentioned earlier on, you know, should you do it as an individual, should you do it as a company? Uh, different answers will apply to different people depending on what you want to get out of the business and your long-term aims. Um, so just as an overview, uh, it's worth thinking what taxes are involved. And obviously, income tax, I think, is the main one uh, that people th think about. Uh, a property business is taxed more or less in the same way as any other business now. So you have your income, and if you've got expenditure, uh, it will be taxed if it's genuinely business expenditure, holding exclusive for the business, that, it, that the expenses are deductible. So what you're taxed on is, is your net profit. Uh, and I'll go into more details about things as we go through. Other things you need to think about is uh, stamp duty land tax, capital gains tax uh, on exit. VAT, if it's purely residential property, VAT isn't an issue. You don't need to register for that, but neither can you claim back the VAT on uh, anything you spend. But if you sort of expand into a property empire and start getting into commercial property, there are some uh, VAT issues around that. Uh, and the other thing to think about, uh, particularly if you're sort of thinking about the long-term structure, is inheritance tax. There aren't any special exemptions for property businesses for inheritance tax. So, again, if your long-term aim is to pass wealth down, down the family rather than uh, um, spend it in your retirement, uh, you might start thinking about inheritance tax as well. So, I'm going to go through the various stages of business. What you might look at when you're starting out what happens in the sort of operating phase as the, as the business is growing and what might happen on exit. Um, I think the first thing to think about with any property business, I mean, we're here tonight talking about property investment, but uh, one of the issues you always get with property businesses is, is it actually an investment business or is it trading? Um, if you're a builder and you buy a site, build houses, sell them on, that's trading, not investment. Uh, if you're buying properties and looking to turn them around very quickly in the hope of making a profit on it, uh, don't always assume that you're going to be taxed as a capital gain because the revenue might come along and say, well, you know, you bought it with the intention of selling on, that's, that's a trade, that's income tax at 45, 40, 45%, not capital gains tax at 28. Um, funding, uh, I think the point, the, the point there is interest is tax deductible. Uh, it may sound very basic to some people, but if, you, if you've got a repayment mortgage and you pay, I've met a number of people who sort of said, well, I've got rental income, and after I've paid the mortgage, uh, there's nothing left, I can't be liable to tax. The, the capital, the repayment element of the mortgage isn't tax deductible, all, you, all that's allowable is the interest. But, but interest is tax deductible, and one of the planning points there is it, you know, it, is, it is one of the forms of borrowing where you can get a tax deduction. So if you've got other personal borrowings on the house, uh, buying cars or something like that, it makes sense to try and put borrow as much money as you can against the rental business uh, rather than take personal borrowings which aren't tax deductible. Um, looking at the structure, uh, you've got a number of choices. Uh, I think, as my colleague mentioned, uh, most people start off as a, a sole trader or, or an individual owning property, either individually or jointly with, with spouses. Um, if you start getting to a size where it's a substantial business, um, or if there are other people involved, you might look at using a partnership, which can give you more flexibility on how the income's divided. Uh, any limited companies might be useful. They have, they have a number of uses. Um, I think the most important thing with a limited company is that the tax rate within the company on the rental profits is lower. So if you're looking to sort of build a portfolio fairly quickly, you pay less tax, you can repay the capital quicker. Uh, but the disadvantage is then the money is in the company. There are further tax, if you want to take out the money out and spend it as an individual, there's further tax charges. So again, it, it's, there's a number of individual choices there. There isn't, you know, there isn't a magic answer that suits everybody. It may depend on your long-term aims and uh, what you want to do. The other tax, yes, stamp duty land tax. I put that up as a reminder because it's quite easy to forget that the regime for stamp duty land tax changed fairly recently so that the old slab system where you reach sort of 
the various thresholds and suddenly the rate went from 2% to 3% on the whole lot has changed. And now, although the rates look higher, it's only it's on the increment so that it's a much smoother curve if you look at the amount. There, isn't, there aren't the same hiccups at various price points. Uh, and again, Scotland has its own system, so if you start looking at Scotland, you're into a completely different regime as well. Once you're up and running, um, as I say, you get tax relief for costs. I've mentioned interest. Um, the big issue with, with rental expenditure is, is, is it a cost that's tax deductible, uh, an ongoing running cost, or is it capital expenditure which might be improving the, the property? And uh, I could spend all night talking about old tax cases on factory chimneys, but uh, <laughs> I, won't, I won't do, but there's a lot, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of case law on, on the point. And I think one of the contentious issues at the moment that illustrates some of the difficulties in the area is around white goods in furnished property. The revenue have recently changed their strategy on that. They used to have, they used to have a, an extra statutory concession that allowed you to use a renewals basis. Uh, so if you replaced a fridge or a washing machine, you could deduct the cost. What they're now saying is, well, actually, uh, a freestanding fridge is a capital item. You don't get capital allowances in rental property, uh, so there isn't a tax deduction for it. Uh, but funnily enough, if you've got a fitted kitchen, the revenue concede that replacing the fridge in a ki fitted kitchen is actually replacing part of the kitchen, uh, and therefore it's a repair. Uh, you may not see the logic in that, I'm not sure I see the logic in that, but that's the way the revenue, <laughs> the revenue are currently operated. But it, the, the, the clear distinction is normally, you know, is it capital? Are you improving the property? Are you making it better? In which case, uh, if it's a persistent improvement, when you come to sell the property, if it's still there, then you'll get a capital gains tax deduction, but no income tax relief on the way through. Or is it a repair, in which case it's just a running cost and you can deduct it against the income? The other point... Sorry. No, I'm on the... Uh, I'm on... Have I missed a... Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, the other point to mention, if you do get it, if you get as far as doing furnished lettings, there is actually a 10% allowance for furniture and fittings, 10% of the net rental income. So, uh, again, uh, there isn't a clear borderline between what's furnished and unfurnished. I think if you've just got white goods, kitchens, frid fridges, washing machines, then it's probab that probably isn't furnished. But if you go the whole hog and provide the accommodation with furniture, you can get an allowance for replacing the furnishings. Um, loss relief. Rental income is treated as one business, so uh, if you make a loss on one property, you, it's pooled with the other properties, so you can offset uh, the profits and losses on various properties, but there isn't a, a general relief against other income. Um, companies, you've got more flexibility, but again, if you set up a property company, you might be able to offset the uh, the, rent, the losses against other income, but uh, you may not have other income to set, up, set off. Uh, and I mentioned there, if you get a large business that's running as a business, there may be the possibility of incorporating later, even if you started as an individual, but uh, again, it's not a, a clear-cut area. On exit, um, again, Normally it will be capital gains unless you sort of fall into the category of being a property trading business, so it's 28%. Uh, one of the reasons you might look at using a company is companies still get indexation relief. So whilst as an individual your capital gain is uh, sales price less cost, for a company it's sales price less cost plus an in uplifted for inflation. You don't get any special reliefs on property businesses, so Although entrepreneurs' relief is available for trading companies, for that, for this purpose, pro property investment isn't. It's a, it, it, it's although it's a business, it's not a trade, so it doesn't meet the the category for entrepreneurs' relief and the lower rate. Uh, there are if when you do get if you do get substantial capital gains, there are sort of possibilities to roll it over. But again, they're not property related. They're just the general release for enterprise investment scheme and venture capital trusts. Um, and finally. Um, Bit of a disclaimer, There's obviously this is general advice, so uh, uh, whenever you do anything tax related, I think you need specific advice to your own circumstances. <laughs>